Hi. I am really excited to send in my personal story. I am a 28-year-old woman in my mid-30s who has inherited my father's solar IT business when he retired early. Have you ever heard the sound of a group of cockroaches running? It's strange, but I still remember the time when our economy was struggling because of the subprime meltdown. My father ended up declaring bankruptcy early in his life. He was operating a venture company with big dreams. And her family was evicted from our house and ended up living in a semi-basement room full of mold. The three of us came to live together, and that's where we heard the sound of the cockroaches. When I went into the dark room and turned on the lights, I could hear the shaw sound as they hid. Then if I turned off the lights to go to sleep, I could hear the cockroaches crawling out fast. Again, with that creepy sound. It was the time of hardship and hopelessness. Nevertheless, our family did not give up. We should hum a tune with its lyrics. If we go on, there will be good days to come and weather the cold winter. My father and I worked very hard to have the lyrics of the song to become a reality. My dad went all over the place trying to restart a business, and I studied myself to death. In order to be of help to my parents. I worked so hard that I had never even been on dates. As a result, my father succeeded in recovering and I was also able to enter college as a business major. Finally on my graduation day from college, my dad sat me down and asked about my plans for my career. I told him that I was going to think about it. Then my father thought for a moment, so I reassured him. Dad, don't worry. You know me. I'm your daughter. I will get a position soon. Why don't you come and work at my company and learn the to be honest, I was somewhat surprised with my dad's unexpected job offer. He seemed to understand how I felt. He said that he struggled from a young age and it was taking toll on him these days. He said he wanted to retire soon and just go fishing and rest. I couldn't bear to turn away from my dad who seemed exhausted from heavy responsibilities. To be honest, it was more like a preparation process to inherit the company rather than being hired for a job. Father I met at work was not an easy person while he respected his employees, when necessary. He was a true blue business person. Cold and detail-oriented when you needed to. My father was my role model and I started to learn the. And on my 30th birthday, I was formally inaugurated as the new CEO of the company. On that day, I spent all of my savings to get him a high-quality fishing rod as his retirement gift. Thanks to the good reputation he had built Tub in the industry and with business acumen. I had inherited our company's show rapid growth. Then not too long later, we were able to grow into a company with several outsourced. The man who almost became my husband was a sales rep from one of our outsourced companies. When he visited our company for the first time, I forgot that I was the CEO of a company and fell for him at first sight. He was tremendously handsome. I almost thought that a PR model was brought to our meeting. I'm ashamed to admit that I'm very particular about my man's outer appearance. In terms of having abilities, I have enough so if a guy just treats me well, I felt a good-looking man was enough to live with for the rest of my life. The reason for this was because I had only studied throughout my school days, including college. While others obtained experience by dating to learn how to identify a good man. I only wrestle with the books. Thus, being ignorant. I just pushed for dating that man only because of his handsome looks. I should not have done that while dating him. I was being pushed around by him. Yet I was devoted to him selflessly with all my heart so much that my friends told me to stop being a fool, like a rustic country girl. Fortunately, I did not date him too long. My boyfriend started dating with me thinking about getting married from there. It was the same with my prospective in-laws when I accidentally encountered my boyfriend's parents. The prospective mother-in-law told me straight away, both of you are old enough, so why waste any more time? At that time, I was head over heels for my boyfriend, so I shouted happily to myself. 
I will finally graduate from being single. Then my mother-in-law, continue. It seems that you guys are dying for each other, so why not live together now? I couldn't believe how lucky I was speedily. We set up a day for both sides of the family to meet my prospective mother-in-law, frankly, admitted to her dire situation. That she came from an uneducated family, stricken in poverty, barely able to eat. By the time they just became stabilized, they got defrauded in a pyramid scheme. And still have the debts of over $200,000 that they had to pay off while listening to their stories. My parents had teary eyes. They were reminiscing their own difficult life. When we had to listen to the crawling sounds of the cockroach. So, did I. Perhaps because of that, I took my prospective mother-in-law to be an honest person who told us all about their difficulties. Perhaps my dad felt the same way as I did. He made a promise to my prospective parents-in-law. It's fortunate that my daughter is very capable. We will prepare their newlywed home near your son's workplace, so don't worry about it. I also promise them I will take care of all the wedding expense. If you have anything you need, please feel free to let me know. Wow. Now that I think back, I was a fool. Anyways, the family dinner was overwhelmingly and we started to prepare for the wedding. Seriously, I went with my prospective parents-in-law to reserve a wedding banquet, all. Select all things related to wedding and checked constantly to see if anything was lacking. Then one day I was busy at work with launching of our new products when my prospective mother-in-law called me saying that I needed to accompany her to somewhere. I'm sorry, mother. Right now, I'm in the middle of a very important meeting, honey. Didn't you say that you're the CEO of the company? Couldn't the CEO spend time free? She sounded very determined and I thought something serious had happened, so I rushed out of the office. The prospective mother-in-law didn't even pay attention to me as I arrived in the frenzy. She was only interested in the car I was driving. Your car seemed, so do you drive a domestic car? I'm a young CEO and if I drive an expensive foreign car, I could give very negative impress. That's a very important aspect for my business and these days, domestic cars are very well made, honey. It's not a matter of whether it's okay with you now. Your face is your husband's face, so you should pay more attention from now on. My prospective mother-in-law got in the back seat of the car and talked to me as if I was her higher chauffeur. So, I sat alone in the front seat and drove following her directions to an unfamiliar place. We arrived at a town in the rural area. I learned that she wanted to introduce me to her relatives, right? Of course, I should say hello to her relatives. However, it was strange to sit face to face with the relatives. My prospective mother-in-law and a relative looked at each other. Very awkward. In particular, her relative's face looked bewildered. My prospective mother-in-law tried hard to keep their conversation going. But the atmosphere was too awkward for the talks to continue, and there was a good reason. It turned out that the relative was way too distant. In fact, they couldn't figure out which number of cousins they were. It was a meaningless meeting in the first. On the way home, my mother-in-law says something that was forewarning words. This was also a statement that signaled the beginning of the disastrous wedding preparation. We have a very deep bond among our relatives. We often keep in touch by visiting them. Keep in mind, they are all part of our family. From then on, the prospective mother-in-law called me on a daily basis like her chauffeur to drive around to greet her. Very, very distant. Should I say it was like a tour of the whole state? Anyway, one day she finally revealed her true motive. Don't neglect them just because they're distant relatives. We are all one family. What I'm saying is that you should prepare well for the wedding. Let's budget for the wedding expenses around 200000 Just understand that I'm doing it so that you'll be welcomed. I couldn't respond to the unreasonable request by my prospective mother-in-law. I should have said no, but I was stupid then. 
It was because I was blinded by love at that time. If I could make my man feel proud, I didn't think $200,000 mattered. It didn't take long before I realized that this marriage was a mistake. It was thanks to my prospective mother-in-law's words. Both of you will be busy with work, so I'll do the preliminary preparations for you. Send the money to my account. I will prepare by myself to fit each family members. At that moment, a scene suddenly came to mind. It was when my prospective mother-in-law said that she was paying off a debt of $200,000. Suddenly it woke me up, so I left by making some excuses about the money for the wedding preparations. Then I went straight to my boyfriend's and told him about the wedding expenses. Then his response was even more unbelievable. You have a lot of money, don't you? In your position. 200 grand isn't a burden, right? So please let my mom keep her pride and don't be so stingy. What's the big deal? The moment my boyfriend said those words miraculously, the affection I have for him disappeared. I was amazed at such affection could turn cold like this. I couldn't believe my boyfriend's face that looked so handsome to me. Now turned so unattractive that day I told the truth to my father and he afforded me. Let's take time to think it over. Money makes a person behave without pride. It's something we don't already know, right? So, let's be patient and wait. Since my father was always very wise, I decided to give time to my boyfriend and his family. I waited calmly hoping that they will approach me with sincerity. However, my prospective mother-in-law kept calling me nagging when I would be depositing $200,000 into our account. Moreover, I heard that my boyfriend was acting weird at his work. It was rumors that he acted instantly by bragging that his wife-to-be is the C of your clients, angering his superiors. After some thinking, I decided I couldn't let it go like this and call my boyfriend to meet. However, without any prior notice, he showed up at our meeting place with his mother and his sister. Honey, your sister-in-law has become pregnant regardless of what the situation was. First of all, I congratulated my boyfriend's sister. How could you just congratulate her with only words when you will become her sister-in-law? Anyway, now that it has come to this, why not have the wedding together? Since you're preparing for a wedding, just add a little more budget and I think it would be possible. Your sister-in-law should have the wedding before her stomach shows. As a family, it would be great as a watch them. These people were only thinking about how to suck out more money out of me and my family. They were scheming not only to get money in the name of wedding preparations, but also trying to dump her daughter's wedding expenses on me. I was so angry that I just got up and left. I already decided that this marriage was not to be, and I didn't feel it was worth it to exchange angry words. My time was too valuable to waste on that. However, my boyfriend's family assumed my silence as my agreement. Even though I left showing my anger, the unit began preparing for the joint wedding ceremony. I started to receive added wedding bills, one after another. I couldn't put up with it, so I advised my boyfriend to break up our engage. I also told him that I didn't want to be associated with him and his family any longer. However, my boyfriend took my action as an act. Many women experience as marriage blues. Many women become depressed right before the wedding. I thought you were too. I'm depressed. I'm astounded. I guess you're not assessing the situation, right? I'm most rational than at any other time. Then what else is, are you disrespecting our family just because you have more money? I don't need to talk more. Please get yourself and your family out of my life. That's all I want to say. However, he continued to call me as if I was his girlfriend. Still, it was the same with his family. I believe. The reason they did that was one of the. They didn't in my notice to break off seriously in thought as something a bride goes through from feeling depressed or because of their greediness for money. They just chose to ignore it, regardless of which my parents and I were adamant to break off the engagement, 
and the only issue was to get rid of them as soon as possible. Even after that, those shameless family members crossed the I realized how difficult it is to sever the ties after having a relationship at that time in TV dramas. There's always a member in the family who acts out incredibly and is successful at it. That was also true in life. Practically every day they came by my office demanding for a position for my boyfriend's father and their relatives. And even though I repeatedly told them the engagement was off and threatened. They stuck on like leeches and even hassled my family. One day my boyfriend's mother went to see my dad behind my back and asked to redistribute the inheritance due for me while my parents were still alive and healthy. She wanted to open up a cafe for a pregnant daughter from my parents' early distribution of my inherit. She claimed that a son-in-law is like a son, so he deserved the money. My dad burst into anger saying that was outrageous, and he practically had a heart attack. I got the news late and rushed home to find the police there already. My angry father had called them. My dad announced officially my engagement to be broken as my boyfriend's mother was dragged away by there. However, those idiots had the gall to trespass our house and even stole my dad's fishing rods when I was being inaugurated as the CEO. The fishing rod I had given to my dad as his retirement gift for my dad's selfless devotion all his life to our family. When I found out I immediately made a call. I was going to tell them that if they did not return the fishing rod immediately, I will sue them. However, my boyfriend's sister announced and bluntly announced to me since you broke off the engagement. Whatever was prepared for the wedding, I will use them for myself. Thank you. Before I could even reply, she hung up the phone. At that time, I made a decision I could not peacefully end this engagement. So, what did I do? I just let my boyfriend's sister, who stole everything I had prepared for the wedding and honeymoon, do whatever, whether she was continuing for a wedding or not. I could almost see how happy his mother and his sister would be, but I remained still. Time passed and it was the day before her sister's. Then it was time I picked out my cell phone. Then everything I had booked with my money, I cancelled it. What about the penalty? I decided to pay it as a cleaner fee. Since the wedding and honeymoon package were booked in my name, it was easy to cancel them. Of course, any notices related to the cancellation only came to me. His mom and his sister knew nothing, and when they went to the beauty salon for the, they found out the situation. It was a big mess to find out. The wedding ceremony. Wedding dress, including honeymoon, had disappeared. Not only the groom and the groom's family and the relatives who came on the lease tour bus, and the people who were to sing wedding serenades were completely in chaos, creating a big commo. They were shamed as no other after trying to sneak and use other people's precious money to have an extravagant wedding. My boyfriend's mother called me at a time when the wedding should have been proceeding. She started with expletives to curse me, but it felt like the cockroach was struggling to survive drowning in a pool of. I just watched a movie stretched on my bed eating crackers. Whether she yelled or not, I don't know how long time had passed. My ex-boyfriend's mother made her last request after going belligerent on the phone by herself. Your father had promised a house for the newly weed and $200,000 you have promised and pay as damages. You should consider it a payment for a pain and suffering. If not, I will sue you for what's happened today. Oh, my goodness. Are you going to sue me? However, do you know this is a threat for extortion? I'm recording this. When I said I was recording her, she immediately hung up the phone. A lawsuit, of course, a must. When a sister told me that she was going to snatch away my wedding things for, I had already filed for a lawsuit. I also filed a complaint at the police station for trespassing our house and stealing my father's fishing rod, a theft. In addition, I made a personal call related to my work. Hello, this is President Wiley. I want to request a change of rep to handle our company. It's awkward to be working together when the parties have broken off an engagement to get. 
Thank you for your kind understanding on that day. My ex-boyfriend, who almost became my husband, was demoted and not too long after he was on the recommended list to resign from the company. I had only requested to change the rep, but I guess his company was not satisfied with just that. I guess he was placed in the doghouse for acting so rude even before we got married. He should have acted better. Life is not that easy. If his superiors disliked him, it's obvious he will be fired right away. However, what could one do? He earns it himself not too long after. When his family got my notice of lawsuit filing and recommendation for resignation of my ex-boyfriend, all of his family forced their way into my company. They claimed that they had just borrowed the fishing rod and threw tantrums that it got fired because of me. In the meantime, they didn't forget to demand a house and $200,000 from me. So, I quietly called my company's partner, who was a lawyer. When my father and the lawyer appeared together, suddenly the whole family became silent. Our attorney went over to refute each detail of their demands. He also gave them details of their roots and unruly behaviors as to how damaging they would be in court during the trial. If the case came to that point, it seemed that they should give up, but these people will not give up till the end. They insisted for me to pay for causing damages for my ex to be fired from work and for his sister's broken marriage. So, I told them as if I were throwing salt on the leech that was stuck on my leg. If you need money, you should act humbly and work hard to earn it. Don't demand as if you have the right to it. I'm not a fool to be a sucker who will be sucked into enriching you under the auspice of marriage. You better leave what I'm asking you nicely. If you don't want to add another charge for trespassing, an obstruction of. Eventually they left totally bewildered. After that day, I got the news of the judgment. Their fishing rod theft was judged guilty. My ex's mother was fined. In addition, threatening for extortion and obstruction of business added a suspended sentence for a probation. And the guy who almost became my husband was busy sending out his resumes here and there. Because this industry is so small, the news traveled fast and he couldn't get any job. By the way, I have a piece of news to be congratulated on. I have a boyfriend. It's said that after a junk car, a new Ben will follow, right? He's a man who just fits that description perfectly. His parents are all very nice. Of course, I need to get to know them by spending more time with them. However, one thing I'm sure is that I'm not the same person who was blinded by love and fall. For those BC people who are blood-sucking pests like mosquitoes. I'm now very alert so that I will not repeat the same mistakes. In this world. There are all kinds of people, therefore, the people next to me are more precious. I wish that you're surrounded with good people, and thank you for listening to my. Please cheer for me and write your comments of wisdom in the comment section. Pressing like and subscription is a big help to me. Have a wonderful day.